Okay, this is part three of my uh, Spenglerian uh, lecture, okay? Uh, guys, uh, in this uh, video, I would like to kind of slow down and clarify, you know, because it's a lot of, you know, philosophy to swallow, uh, you know, in the previous two videos. So I'd like to, you know, kind of clarify those main concepts, you know, once again, so you don't feel confused uh, for the next uh, part of this video series. So, um, very central, you know, concept for Spengler's philosophy is being versus becoming. And uh, he was uh, influenced by the French, uh, you know, philosopher named Henri Bergson. And uh, I spoke about him in my other videos. Uh, you know, terrific, terrific philosopher. Uh, ahead, ahead of his time in a lot of ways, uh, you know, got the Nobel Prize, uh, for his uh, philosophical works. And he indirectly influenced like a whole new science known as chaos theory. Like I'm sure you perhaps uh, saw this uh, stupid movie, Butterfly Effect. I mean, that you know movie is very much based on sort of chaos theory and uh, you know something called perturbations and uh, don't wanna get into it in this particular video. So um, being versus becoming, all right, so this is the way that Spengler thinks about cultures and civilizations. So when you are young, you are becoming, you know, uh, you know, think about your own life. And uh, Spengler came up with this concept after he read Bergson's creative evolution, by the way. So, uh, you know, think about yourself as a, you know, young person, you know, well, you are, you have you are becoming something you know you go to college you study you know you try all these different jobs and you know some of them you like some of them you fail you kind of you know um, associate yourself with uh, you know different groups of people perhaps you try different you know kind of subcultures you you know you try being a goth you you know try being a hipster um, you know you are becoming okay but once you get older you kind of you know stiffen up you know you you know, you do one job, you know, you kind of hang out with just one group of people. Uh, so that's when you are being something. Okay, so um, essentially, as you age, your becoming, you know, gets smaller and your being gets larger, you know, so you, you know, pretty, you know, common sense, you know, philosophy, you can say so essentially, um, you know, for living things, okay, um, you know, we are becoming, becoming, and then we sort of, we are finally, it's like, you know, you're becoming, you know, go to college, you're becoming, uh, you know, an accountant, you know, you study, you pass your tests, you know, and then you are an accountant, you know, first you're becoming an accountant, and then you actually are an accountant. And that's when you kind of, you know, stiffen up and, you know, that's what being is. So, once a process gets completed, that process, you know, gains being, okay? So this uh, Spengler, this organism analogy, Spengler applies to cultures and civilizations. So cultures are becoming and civilizations are being. And within each, you know, culture, you have kind of, you know, different philosophers, different writers, different mathematicians, which um, deal with aspects of becoming or with aspects of being of that culture. So I, I know this probably uh, sounds pretty incomprehensible. So let me, uh, you know, break it down for you with a specific example. So, um, for instance, who is a philosopher of becoming in, you know, Greek culture? It's Plato, okay, because for Plato, um, you know, his theory, you know, of the human life, like you are becoming something that this world is in flux. OK, so there are these, you know, forms, you know, these kind of perfect forms which exist out there. And, you know, this world is just a, you know, it's an imitation. It's a becoming of these forms, essentially. And a philosopher of being is Aristotle. So for Aristotle, you know, things are more stable, they're fixed, um, you know, there's kind of, um, you know, static 
quality to Aristotle, you can say, and a dynamic, uh, you know, quality in Plato. So, um, and by the way, mathematics, uh, mathematics is always being, okay? Mathematics comes later on in a culture. Like, it's not something, you know, young cultures have, okay? Like, uh, look at, you know, the West, um, you know, so Western civilization started approximately a thousand years ago with um, sort of, um, you know, 1100 with Gothic architecture, with uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, scholasticism, but there was no mathematics, you know, kind of curious. I mean, there were kind of, you know, bits and pieces like uh, uh, the famous, you know, Fibonacci, but, you know, he uh, pretty much recycled, you know, Arabic, uh, you know, mathematics to a large extent. And he, he came later on, like, like this was not early on in the Western culture. So, you know, real advanced, uh, you know, systematic mathematics was developed halfway into the Western culture, you know, like with Descartes, Leibniz and Newton. So same thing uh, goes for the Greek culture, you know, mathematics uh, came into existence uh, with uh, essentially, you know, Eudoxus and then later on, uh, Euclid, Archimedes, and Apollonius later on. So uh, mathematics is being, okay? Philosophy is both becoming and being, but um, earlier on it's, you know, your culture is about becoming and then it's being, all right? And theology is primarily becoming so we get you know kind of theology you know religious doctrines early on in the culture um, and we have you know a philosophy in the middle we also have philosophy and we have a stiffening theology it kind of gets stiffer and in the second half of a culture you know we get mathematics we get you know kind of science we get advanced um, advanced uh, philosophy and theology dies when this happens. All right, so I hope this, you know, becoming and being uh, stuff makes sense. And now you guys are ready for the next part.